No matter whether we're talking about the cheapest of the cheap hardware, or more expensive than anybody should ever spend, it probably has some level of configuration software for configuring things like macros and various other things you might want to configure, RGB control, updating your firmware, or even changing core operation modes like fan speed, or changing a power supply from single rail to double rail mode. But more often than not, this software is the only option available, and often that software is only available on Windows. Maybe you'll be in luck, and it's available on macOS, but good luck with anything more. And when we're talking about older hardware, let's say five plus years old, but it still functions physically just like it should, good luck even getting that far. Now, some developers out there have done some incredible work getting devices not supported on other systems actually configurable. Say, for example, with Lib Ratbag. This is great for Logitech devices, supports a bunch of other things as well, but if you have a Logitech mouse, a Logitech keyboard, you should be using Lib Ratbag, and preferably with the GUI Piper. And there are other projects out there, like OpenRGB, which aim to make RGB controllable across every operating system, across every device out there. The problem is most of it's just not documented, and a lot of it involves reverse engineering. Just scrolling down to the bottom here, you can see all the projects that OpenRGB relies on. All of these plugins, all of these projects being used, and almost none of these projects are supported by the developers of the hardware. All of the people involved in this project, in Lib Rat Bag, and all of the other projects out there aiming to do a similar thing or helping out with these individual projects have done absolutely incredible work and deserve all the respect that they get. But it is work that should never have had to be done. So enough is enough. But I and many of us out there don't have any sway in the industry to make anything change. But... Wendell from Level 1 Techs and Gamers Nexus, they do have some level of sway. So what they are doing is starting a new non-profit called Codename Open Pleb, a non-profit for open consumer motherboard and peripheral standards. Open Pleb is a non-profit company dedicated to hosting open documentation and royalty-free agreements from computer peripheral companies. Unlike some people seem to think in the Gamers Nexus comment section, this is not a software project. This isn't trying to replace what OpenRGB, what LibRatBag, and all of these other projects are doing. They are trying to get the documentation to make these projects vastly, vastly easier. And they are not expecting companies to re-engineer their entire tech stack. That would be completely unfeasible, and nobody would ever want to work with them. OpenPleb is an organization founded around accessibility. OpenPleb wants to make the hardware you already own as accessible as possible for whatever software you want to run. Too often in our adventures as hardware enthusiasts, we run into bottlenecks and barriers centered around proprietary software. Why do so many RGB peripheral control protocols and interfaces need an undocumented black box? The problem is it's not undocumented. It is fully documented by the company. They just don't give you the documentation. Do we really need a company charging everyone else three cents for a combination fan plus RGB connector just because they have the most clout? And why does controlling your hardware mean you're reliant on poorly written software from 2003? At least if it's well documented, you can use poorly written software from 2023. Now this is that point about core functionality. Unfortunately, many companies do not have a good track record of providing more than a year or two of support for consumer peripherals. For example, the Corsair AX1600, which is a power supply, can run in single rail or multi-rail mode, but requires software to configure it. This software does not run on modern operating systems. So you either have to have a virtual machine to run the software, dual boot, or set it once and never change it again. Whilst it would also be nice if companies supported the devices long into the future, nobody involved in this is asking for that to happen. We simply wish to document how it works, so that should there be enough desire from end users, 
third party control software could be developed. Whether that's a generic power supply control program, whether that's something specific for Corsair, but just open source. Either way, if there's enough community interest, someone can build it. So open pleb has three primary goals. OpenPleb will provide documentation. Now, initially, the focus is going to be on motherboard features like RGB control, sensor monitoring, fan control, and peripheral control. But this might extend out to other device classes like power supplies, RGB controllers, and keyboard and mice, and other devices that you probably want to control as well. But when you're starting an initiative like this, just getting the ball rolling is what's really important, and then other things can be addressed as things progress. OpenPleb will provide accountability. They will provide a public list of companies and products that are currently supplying or are working to supply documentation so users can make informed purchasing decisions. If some company like... um. Corsair, for example, says we are going to be committed to supporting all of our devices with open documentation, whether that's keyboard, mice, or power supplies, or anything else they make. If you're trying to decide on the device you want to buy, if this is something you really care about, that should be something that is encouraged, and you should probably go and buy their hardware. OpenPleb will provide community. They will also coordinate and manage crowdfunded or bounty-funded reverse engineering programs only when absolutely necessary to discover and document any undocumented features of motherboards that end users would find useful. For example, documenting how a platform monitoring chip works or commands that could be sent via SMBus to a Corsair linked device to access and control it. Because there are really smart developers out there who would probably be great at doing this reverse engineering. The problem is they've got day jobs, and they've got other things they need to be focusing on, they can't really spend the weeks or months it would take to go and get something like this done. But if there is some sort of incentive program there, if the companies are not willing to play along, that is going to help out quite a bit. But Wendell and Gamers Nexus have both been in this game for a very long time, and both have a lot of company connections. So the OpenRGB developer made his own video on this topic. OpenPleb, an initiative from Level 1 Techs and Gamers Nexus. It's a great video, go and watch it. It gives his perspective as a developer working in this space. But on this video, Gamers Nexus actually left a comment. And it turns out they've made a bit more progress so far than you might initially expect. I hate YouTube, why is there so much on my screen? As a positive note, I have two interested companies already joining with pledges. Also, I've talked to a couple of CEOs and have gotten soft commitments. So now it's just a matter of making them real. Even with the pledges here, it's still a matter of making them real and actually getting the documentation out there to the public. I'm really curious which companies these actually are. I hope they're not just some small little company no one's ever heard of. It would be kind of crazy if it was one of those big major companies like an Asus or someone like that. As of this recording, June 16th, 2023, nothing has been accomplished, everything is just getting started. But that doesn't mean you cannot get involved. So over on the thread here, there is some explanation about what you can go and do. How to get involved. The main thing you can do right now is go to the OpenPleb Hardware Fails Forum and start posting about things that you've dealt with that have been problems with your hardware. This may not seem like it's actually going to do anything, but this is going to be used as examples to show the companies what is wrong with their hardware and how people are actually trying to use them. You might think these companies are just acting evil for the sake of being evil, and I'm sure that some of them actually are. But I would imagine many of them simply don't know that people are trying to use their devices in ways they didn't expect, didn't know that people are still using a lot of the older devices that they are now dropping, and it doesn't really hurt them to release the documentation. I'm sure as we go on there'll be further things you can do if you're a developer and have some experience doing reverse engineering once they have that bounty program available, then you can get involved doing development work as well. But right now, go and get involved in here. I'm sure you have at least one or two stories, especially if you are a Linux user and you have any sort of peripherals like, I don't know, a mouse or a, a keyboard. I'm sure there is something you can say about things just kind of being a mess. 
or, you know, RGB controller stuff or whatever else you want to get involved with. So expect further updates to be made into the future and I'm really curious to see where this goes because this is pretty much what we've always wanted, not just on Linux, but in the general computing world. But nobody has really had the reach or stepped up to actually do it to make it happen. There have been some absolutely massive creators out there who are focused on other things, like Linus is focused on his stuff with framework and other people are doing their other things. But someone with that reach, someone with those connections, I'm so happy that someone is actually doing it. I wish everybody involved the absolute best of luck and hopefully companies are actually receptive. And if you happen to work at any of these companies, whether it's a Corsair, whether it's a Logitech, or even any of the smaller companies, get this discussion happening within the company, even if it's just a little thing in the Slack channel or by the water cooler, just get people talking about it, and maybe some change will actually happen. I know some people are going to say, just don't buy gamer peripherals, don't buy gamer this, don't buy gamer that, but this is more than just gamer devices. This is about sensors on your motherboard. This is about controlling your hardware devices in the way that you should be able to control it on Windows, on any other system you want to control it on, or older devices that no longer are supported on open source third party software that is maintained by the community. This matters to everyone if you have components in your computer. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think this is something that should have happened years ago? Do you have some ability to get involved and you want to ask about how you might do so? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over, wait, no, these, <laughs> got them wrong. These amazing people over here, Patreon, subscribe, silly, verify, link, description down below. That's going to be it for me. And I have watched Wendell since he was on Tech Syndicate. That was a very long time ago. <laughs>